have emotions and think about things. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Hi, and welcome to Emotional and Mental Justice. I'm Yuna, and welcome to my podcast. Today, I am joined by my beautiful niece, Takia. Takia is an incredible woman, and I'm so honored and grateful that you have made it to my podcast today. Um, hi, Takia. Hey. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. I'm, I'm so glad you've been planning it for a while. So. Yeah, so I know that we've talked um, for a while about you coming onto my podcast, but we've never quite got to it. Um, and yeah. we're here now, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. I cannot start this without giving you an intro, okay? Um, I want people to know who you are and what you do because you do so much. So what I've done is I've written a few okay. things down because I do not want to um, miss anything out because I think there's so much to you and so much to what you do. Um, and it's just mm -hmm. important for me to um, introduce you as who you are, okay? So, <laughs> Takia works in global public health Right now, her work is focused on universal health coverage, which is to ensure people around the world have access to quality health services without suffering financial hardship. She also works on cervical cancer elimination. She is passionate about preventing youth violence and sustainable communities. Her work has led her to understand the climate effects on communities. She is a trustee of the charity Desmond Tutu Foundation, which focuses on thriving communities. Um, she also has a YouTube channel and all the stuff and places you can find it will be written at the end of it. I mean, you know, looking at it again, just the stuff you've done. I mean, how old are you, Takia? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm 27. <laughs> I don't know if you don't mind me asking. But at 27, yeah, yeah. You've, you've done so much and you're doing so much. I just think, you're, you know, you're incredible. So thank you for being here and gracing us. Oh, bless you. Thank you, Uni. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you so, so much. Um, I'm glad to be here. I'm so happy to be here. So. Good, good, good. So you reached out to me and said to me, you wanted to come onto my podcast and talk yeah. about um, identity. Mm -hmm. um, so what what made you want to reach out and what made why now? Why now? Um, okay, so we've been talking about podcasting for a while. We've been talking about um, me coming on for a long time, for like about a year now. So I'm glad that we've been able to make it happen. Um, I feel like, especially, you know, and honestly, I feel like with lockdown and with what we're in lockdown three, just having a bit more of that space to do some of these things that, that I really wanted to do for a while. So I'm, yeah, blessed in that regard, just with a bit more time. Um, and identity. Okay, so this week, I know God's been speaking to me a lot about identity in particular. Uh, I, I feel for like for 2021, like God's saying faith, faith, faith. But this week in particular, um, it was about identity. So I thought I'd share. Um, and also the other thing is that, you know, when Facebook does the reminder things, and I'm not even on Facebook as much, like I'm on Instagram. And then Facebook did that whole reminder of taking back 10 years. And normally I'll just scroll past it or whatever. But I was just, I, I, it got me in a place of reflecting of you know, my 17 year old self to now being 27 and I thought I'd share some lessons about identity because identity is a crux of everything in life knowing your identity so mm. yeah so yeah, that at that 10 year um comparison uh -huh. now and 10 years is a long yeah. time you know a lot can happen in that time um exactly. so before, before we delve into it what what does identity mean to you <coughs> excuse me oh, okay oh identity okay when you think about identity straight away it's like knowing yourself it's that question of who am i you know like what am i meant to do on this planet why am i here at this time what am i called to do um uh, and also you know the other the other factors that make make up make up who you are um your, your cultural upbringing your background um you know all, all these other issues but if you ask me specifically about identity and what i wanted to share and talk about was understanding my identity in christ um and if I'm, sometimes i wish I, I got some of this revelation way younger um so yeah so i think that's going to be tied to some of like these lessons and these learnings i'm learning about but for me it's my identity in christ as a daughter you know i, I was gonna say daughter or son but you know for me a daughter of god um, and that's identity to me is knowing that i am now flawless in my father's eyes and I've been created for such a time as this, and I, you know, God destined me. So, and I'm here because of, of God's love for me. 
Well, blessed, yeah. blessed and highly favoured. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you've talked about yeah. your younger self and you've talked about, you know, a 10 year uh -huh. gap. Um, yeah. I guess, you know, going into that, what can you, uh -huh. uh, it's up to you where you would like to begin, but what can you tell us, you know, in relation to your younger uh -huh. self? Okay, cool. So I, 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 like one of the biggest lessons I think I'm learning now even to keep remembering to go back to, but the biggest lesson is that God is always doing something new. He's always doing something new. And it's like, um, there's a verse in Isaiah, it's like, do you not perceive it? And right now, yeah, in this days, like I'm, I'm asked, my, my new kind of prayer to God is like, help me to perceive what you're doing. Like awaken my eyes to see what you're doing. And even if I can't see it, to trust it so I remember when I was 17 and um, applying to universities uh, maybe I was 17 18 um, and just before you go to university you're like okay I got my conditional offer or my unconditional offer so I had an offer for Loughborough University and I was like okay well you know as a Christian God loves me I'll claim whatever I need and I'll get whatever I need and, and that's how it works you know, I just have to have faith so there was this uni in particular Loughborough University and then I even, I wasn't, I, I got a conditional offer, which means that if I get the grades, then I'll, I'll be accepted to that uni. And then um, it went to such a point where I went to that university. I uh, went to the open day. I went to their Bible study groups, their church Bible study groups. Bear in mind, I was not even a student there. I told everybody that I, that was my uni. I was going, I'm packing for there. Let me get to know the town, everything. <laughs> and then come the results. <laughs> literally I, I went to a, 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 an extreme of um yeah uh, and um come results that i didn't get the grades to get in and it wasn't even a negotiation thing it was like no you're not going you, you know, you're going to your back and i was i think i was devastated for a while because i was like but god i did everything that you told me to do i mean mm. I, I thought i had anyway um i've done this I've, I've moved by faith i've told everyone i've claimed it done this da 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 um, but so at the time, I guess I wish like I'd be like, um, you know, God, help me to understand what you're doing and help me to trust. But there was a reason why he needed me there. Like there was such a reason. Now when I look back, I can trace like why God needed me to go to that university. Yeah, and, and, and um, sorry to interrupt you. It's just when you say, yeah. um, you know, you thought you felt that you did everything God wanted you to do at the time. You even yeah. went there. You claimed uh -huh. it. You told your friends, "This is my university." <laughs> and I guess at that time. Mm -hmm without having the hindsight that you have today, it must have been kind of mm. heartbreaking. Or, you know, how do I now tell people? I don't know, how, how did you feel at the time? Yeah, I think that's the exact same thing, what you said, like, I just, I felt kind of um, ashamed in a way, upset, like heartbroken, yeah. And also asking God a lot of questions, but then I think everything moved really quickly. So then you're just thrown into uni. So I was like, okay, fine. But then this thing happened again, um, another time when I moved to a, like this now post university I got I get a new job 21 moved to a new community and I don't know the community and I'm new at work and stuff and um even in that time there when I was put there like the job didn't pan out to what I thought it was um I think it was a lot of new anxiety a lot of fear and also something about worth uh, which I'll talk about later but just feeling like inadequate and also being in that new time and space. I'm like, God, why is there nobody around for me? Like I'm in this area, I don't know anybody. And I, I feel like I can't even explain or talk about what I'm going through. And I know that there's a lot of, um, so there's a lot of young people that also go through the same thing, you know, at different stages at like these major milestones of transitioning from uni to, oh, sorry, from GCSE to like going to college or uni to first job and, and all of that. Um, but then in hindsight now, you know, I can say, I know why God needed me in that space. I know why there was these certain challenges I faced. I know why there was no one around me in that new community. And it was God calling me to himself, God calling me to meet certain people that would change my life. Um, and then this woman, um, this pastor, she's just shy, right? Do you know her? Or the, mm -hmm. uh, Priscilla, Priscilla, that's it. Priscilla Shira, or Shira. No, no, who's that? She's um she's an amazing um pastor and one thing that she said um that I love, she said, When you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. So mm. even in those situations 
when I was in Woolwich, there was I was not trusting God's heart at all. I was not I was not trusting God's heart. I was like, why am I look God, you gave me this job, but it's not proliferate. It's like the the, the the advantages, I'm not seeing it in the way that I thought I was. Or God told me to apply to Loughborough Uni, told me to have this kind of faith, but I'm not there. So yeah. at that age I knew how to trust God's heart. Um yeah, so and I think that links like into into knowing knowing the word, knowing knowing his promises. Um, yeah, and at that stage, like if I can say anything, I was at a point where I I read my Bible. I was like a typical, I don't know, it just it just a, a one maybe on a Sunday at church mm-hmm. when the pastors would pull out your Bibles <laughs> to verse. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was a Sunday Christian. Um, I knew a few of the typical verses, but I don't know if I believed them, like truly believed them. So yeah, I think that was a, a big turning point for me like, when I was in Woolwich and. Um, in that season of aloneness, and I, I kind of had to go to God. Um, yeah. Well, okay. So, um, I just have a question, just on what you've said. Um, uh-huh. You said that you know those things now, and you know how God, um, you know, put you through those things for a purpose and for uh-huh. a reason. Yeah. Speaking of back to your younger self, how do you feel that your younger mm-hmm. self could have known these things at that time, the things that you know today? Yeah. I reckon um one of the things is having people in your life um that can speak to you about these things um maybe you know a, an openness to to search for the things of god and, you know at the end of the day like there's no uh regret or there's no like um there's no i, I wish this didn't happen this way because i still see god still turned up even messy situation god was still using that to kind of pull me back to him and like there's a verse to which talks about like god pulling you with cords of love and kindness that's like my all-time favorite verse ever yeah. because just the imagery is so beautiful it's like i'm gonna pull you i'm gonna come into your mess and all of that um but at the same time i still because of what i know i still see the value of like having other women other people like in younger people's lives to kind of help steer them to direct them to say you know there is something more about you there's something precious there's something worthy and um, have you seen what the scripture says about you so yeah. you're right like i mean maybe there, there was not necessarily a way i could have known i mean i'm sure i got distracted 100 yeah. percent. i got distracted yeah there's well, a couple of years i kind of tuned that- out yeah, yeah, sorry to interrupt mm. you. What's important is that God showed up anyway. You know, God exactly. showed up anyway. And um, with you speaking of having those role models, having those women in your life that do guide you, I guess it, um, yeah. it, it could lead to one finding out the things sooner yeah. than later. You may still get there, but you may get there sooner. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. That's so yeah. true. You, you get, and also you have to say yes, because God doesn't force you. Um, and you can say no to some of the things you've been taught anyway. So it's like the distractions of life. That's it. It's like distractions of what the world has to offer, the fastness of like, I want to do this in my career. I want to have this sort of relationship. I want to do this at the movies. And then you forget. But but grounding people is so necessary and having like that importance of, of other women in your life. So clearly with you, with mum, like growing up, like there was a foundation that you guys had set, right? There was a foundation about um, uh, like trusting in God, about going to your Bible, about, you know, you can still make it. You might be working hard in this life right now, but you can still make it. And I'm going to, you and mum, like, I'm going to be the type of women that can inspire mm-hmm. you to keep doing better. But for a young person, it's like, you still have to say yes. You still have to lean in. You still have to trust and believe, like, what people say to you. And sometimes it's like, Sometimes it's it's only God that can really dive into someone's heart and uh, and do the work. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, yeah. Just wanted to acknowledge, like with you saying, there was me, there was your mom, obviously. Um, yeah. And you also talk about being a Sunday Christian. I think we're all, at, and we've all at some point been guilty of being just that Sunday mm-hmm. Christian, um, yeah. whereby yes, we're there for certain things that could help you with with whatever. You, you may have um, drawn from us but there's also elements of of us not ha- having been in a place um in christ or whatever else to have given you that guidance and because i think yeah. a journey we're all going through our journeys 
with, with the distractions of life, with um, building our faith and everything else. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's an important thing for even yeah. older women to know that, you yeah. know, they have to be in a certain place to be able to give that guidance as well. 100%. And also, you know, like the other thing is, sometimes, um, sometimes your, your family, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's diff different points of life, like, um, you know, God's word says, guide your child, tell your child and in the, in the, teach them in the way they should go on. But like on different points in your life, there'll be different people that are necessary, like to feed in. But some maybe like if you are like you know, a young sixteen-year-old, you have your mom, you have your your aunties there, you've got your family unit, which is strong. But you know you venture out into a workplace, and that's why sometimes you might need a mentor in your workplace, or it might be someone else that you confide in. Or as a young child, a, a young woman, you might not feel as confident to confide in a certain issue with your family. I think. With maturity now i can come to you to mom with certain things but um 100 like we have a role in other people's lives who are not our family members you know um and other women's lives and that's 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 kind of how the gospel has been shared for like decades it's like it's not always the family um it's other people and we all have a responsibility in our yeah, young yeah. women's lives and yeah, I 100% I, I agree with that. And it's such a powerful thing because there are so many people out there that don't have opportunities and um, yeah. don't see those opportunities. And for somebody uh, to reach out to a stranger or to, or to be able yeah. to identify a group of people that might just need that input is such a yeah. beautiful thing because we all have a part to play. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We're all this community. It's this whole, it takes a community to raise a child. It takes a, a community to help someone, you know, as an adult, just keep growing, just keep running their race. So, yeah. Absolutely. Right. Well, thank you for that. And um, so, yeah, so continue. You were talking well, about um, your younger self with university and everything before I <laughs> move the topic. Oh, no, no. Okay. So um, I guess what I'd say, like the time in Woolwich, um, I know, and this is what I feel like, this happened from experiences and conversations with other people sometimes God calls you to a place where no one can quite understand but him and it's like I need you to seek me and I need you to know your word for myself and I need you to believe me so I feel like that's probably what was happening in Woolwich I didn't quite understand like Whoa, what's going on but God kind of needed me to himself as well for a little while and um there's some promises that you know that I wrote um around identity and oh and also there's another story that I know we spoke about, about the hair cutting of hair. But <laughs> there's, this, there's this scripture that I stand on right now. And I wish, like, I wish I stood on it earlier in life. And it's, it's one that I would really encourage every, every female, every male. But for me, anyway, if I'm like ministering to young girls or speaking with them or just building a relationship, this is what I would kind of hold on, like want them to hold on to. So it's Romans 5, verse 1, um, and it's the tra the TPT translation, um, which is the Passion translation, and it's our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and he now declares us flawless in his eyes. This means we can enjoy true and lasting peace with God, all because of what the Lord Jesus, the anointed one, has done for us. Um, okay, so in that... Wow. Um, it's amazing right i know so just um the word flawless jumped out i mean yes. it's ex explain what what that means to you that verse and and why that one's so special yeah. to you yeah so it's i think that word is, is everything because i'll say i speak on me particularly but i know like a lot of women struggle with this it's like I, there's so many imperfections in me you know these imperfections in me mean that I am not attractive or beautiful or it means I'm not worthy or it means if I get this sort of role I can't fulfill it or because the thing with the imperfection like it plays out in other areas of your life so um when you know the bible just says you are flawless and you actually believe that it's like it changes everything it changes the game um yeah so there's this story that I thought I'd share and it's related to her yeah. and um oh gosh so I was like 17 and I think this is the most visible example of me doing this but I know I've done this so many times in my life to try and attract try and look you know like a certain way to a guy um and the thing with having beautiful black hair like for me is the versatility of it I can do anything uh with my hair 
and then I can take on I can look so many different ways which is um which is amazing but at the same time it did, for me there was a certain stage where I was like getting into that habit of doing that because I was trying to appeal to somebody else I wasn't doing it because I wanted to be adventurous with my hair you know some points there was but other points it was like I'm trying to fit into the mold of what I think I need to be for that person to like me or for that mm. person to, to 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 gravitate towards me yet the word says I'm flawless already and I didn't hold on to that at all so yes yeah, so I was in like um year 10 or year, yeah year 10 or year 11 and there was this boy and um uh -oh, he was uh -oh. new. Boy, boy trouble uh -oh. here we go <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh it's so funny just like listening back to it that was a very mortifying experience of my teenage life um yeah there was this boy who was new transferred to school bit of a bad boy um <laughs> I was like, oh gosh wow um let me try and look a little bit different and but this is how it starts and then i dyed my beautiful hair oh. i dyed it myself at home <laughs> i think i even had to in it because i don't i think i needed to get it to a certain stage of like um to lift the color and back, this are the days before YouTube for me anyway. I wasn't using YouTube like that. So I was just following the back of the instructions and my hair turned orange. It was hilarious. And then oh, no. I couldn't even, you know how mum is, right? So I couldn't even <laughs> say I, I want to miss a day of school. There was no missing school. There was no like. <laughs> no, not, not, not for her. <laughs> not in that household. <laughs> <laughs> no way. So I went to, uh uh. Oh my God. You know, the thing is, you know, like even if I had a day or two to kind of fix it, like to correct it but mm -mm, I went to school my hair was orange like people <laughs> asked, I think even asked me why my hair was orange I think it was that deep like and it was mortifying because obviously everything at that age is so elevated and it's like it's, it's all about beauty and looks and appearance um unfortunately yeah. it normally what, yeah. what it is at that age it's true it's true and you just think now that with social media it being so magnified for young girls and that's why like the message, the understanding of knowing what the Bible says and mm. believing it earlier, like, I think it's so key, so important, like now more than ever. So yeah, so this 100%, this way of doing things played out in my life so many more times growing up, growing older. Um, and what I will say that, you know, the look, look, I'm rocking my natural hair and I love it. And can I, can I just like, say mm, your hair? right now is looking flawless <laughs> i'm grabbing that word Thank from you. romans I'm, I'm you, feeling you're... Flawless. I'm... <laughs> yes, you're looking flawless feel it girl <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you and uh you know and you know what's really weird though as well you know like this is the first time that i've ever like at 27 that i've worn my natural hair consistently without adding anything to it i can testify um, yeah and it's it, it it shouldn't for me the reason why it shouldn't it shouldn't have happened like that for so long and it shouldn't um not you know it, it shouldn't have been that way because it's like this whole idea that it still wasn't quite enough like i started my natural hair journey years ago but um i still didn't leave out my natural hair <laughs> like I'll, I'll put a bit of something something or it'll come out for like a day and then go back into braids or this or that or that and you know understanding a reason why you're doing that is important because it's different for every female some people you know they prefer braids and that's them they prefer their weave that's them and they're confident and they trust their identity and they trust that god's made them beautiful flawless but for me it was different for me and actually there was one moment um, I think it was last year sometime, um, and I, it, my hair, I cried over my hair, and it wasn't even, it wasn't just a bad hair day, you know, sometimes when people have a bad hair day, I was literally like, hold on, why am I feeling this sort of anxiety, pain, frustration over my hair, and it just brought me back to many times that I'd felt that maybe inadequacy or in in so, like something not quite as as worthy like from years back from maybe being 14 15 16 yeah um, and and when when was this recent realization of when you cried over your hair this was last year so maybe okay, so very recent six, yeah about six months ago but it was i think you know it wasn't even it wasn't even like i was frustrated over my hair maybe for me it was like a breakthrough moment, a bit of realization, like, wow, I've I've had, I've 
I've had like a, 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 a trauma or something about about hair for um, a while and I'm not fully embracing you know what the, the new things that God is saying to me the the and it's not it's more it goes more than beyond hair and I think that's why I was even crying in that moment um this year since March 2019 I would say like the way um the way I've been learning about what God is saying about his love for me um and believing it is different it's, it's different completely so when I got that says like hold on to here like you're crying about this about this give it to God give this like this this thing that you've been dealing with give it to God and and embrace like this new completely fully embrace this new journey give it all to God um yeah and I, I'm 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 resting in these verses I'm resting in like God's scriptures and God's promises for me now like like I've like I never have before. Maybe it's even a reason why I reached out to you about this, mm. about the podcast as well. It yeah. sounds like you found respite and found peace in the word, um, you know, in the promises. Uh, yes. Because for, for you, yes. It, it makes me sad to hear that you would get to a place and when you were talking about it, you did say the word trauma, but before you said that I picked out the word trauma in my mind from hearing what you were saying, because it does sound very much like a trauma. And maybe it wasn't just about hair, but these are the things going back to, being able to give youngsters teachings and things like that. It could be for them about nails. It could be for them about school. It could be about anything for people to go through a trauma and not understand or, or be able to find peace in, in the word. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's, it can be detrimental to, to health for a long time. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. Um, it, and as I said, like something like in, in, in adequacy or feeling like sometimes it manifests in different ways. And sometimes as a believer, um, you know, you will, you will um, come to a place where you, you give it to God and, um, and you know God is doing something different. God is giving you something new. You're walking, you know, you're walking with God and you're believing what he says to you. But then there's times still in your walk with God, like if you do not keep submitting to God daily, if you do not keep art, like spending time in his word, spending time in his promises, it's like the old mindset comes and kicks back in and like you start believing some of these old things that you that you left behind some of these old like again this tr old trauma these old voices these old like feelings of i'm not good enough i'm not worthy enough they come back and for me it's like what's changed um again holding on to the promises of god and believing them but the word of god also says like renew your mind daily Mm. um so for me it means like staying charged up like i can't go off last week's fast <laughs> or last week's like high of being with god um it needs to be like a, a daily surrender a daily like god you know what today i'm not feeling like praying i'm not feeling like worshiping i'm not feeling like reading your word please help me please help me and sometimes it's not even going by a feeling but it's going by what i know god has called me to do and being obedient um yeah and I think, yeah. I, I think that it's a daily, it's a daily walk, it's a daily walk. And yeah. And um, I think with you saying as well that, um, you know, the, the word says, I renew your mind daily. And then the next thing you yeah. said was about um, sometimes we as Christians, we can also say, I can't pray today. I don't know how to pray. I'm not feeling this today. And it's OK, because God is there yeah. for us and he, he, he will guide us through it and help us through it. Yeah. Um, and I guess there's with Christians, there's a guilt that comes with sometimes there's a guilt that comes with not being able to pray enough, not being able to worship right. enough. Um, yeah. But sometimes you can't and give it up to God, give it up to God. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. And the guilt is what the enemy wants us to operate in. The guilt is what the world says is good. It's fine. Like, but that's not mm -mm, that's the, that, And again, probably that's another huge life lesson, the guilt thing. You feel guilty, you run away from God. You feel guilty, you run away from church, run away from your brothers and sisters that um, can kind of maybe correct you, give you some input, some like, some love and correction. But yeah. for me now, a huge lesson is run to God. Like even in your guilt, like I've fallen, I've done this, I've done that. Run to God, take it to God, sit yeah. with God, lament with it, with God. Um, and that would again that probably would have saved a lot of like nonsense. I do agree yeah. that you know things could have saved a lot of nonsense, but at the same time, I do 
truly believe that we have to sometimes just go through the journey we go through because that's that's life that's part of life you know without being able to go through a journey we, we can't sometimes get to those lessons or get to that realization uh, yeah perhaps um and i think it's like it, it's taking those learnings those lessons and, and applying them you know sharing your testimony not being afraid to share these learnings you know and speak about and that's them. why we're here you know we're here to exactly. share it's about talking about real yeah. things that everybody uh -huh. can relate to and i do believe everyone can relate to this Com completely i'm glad <laughs> i mean um there's a there's this other one as well you know um i don't know if i shared this with you, um but it's isaiah 62 verse 3 um and it's you are a, i won't read the full verse but it's like you are a royal diadem in the hand of the lord you're um, a royal what sorry say that again a royal diadem in the hand mm -hmm. of the lord like a special sort of like crown in the hand of the lord and another mm. time i even wrote the time when i got the scripture in my bible like i dated it and it was like last year again something something happened um like lost expectations with relationships and then but god gave me that verse and i was like okay fine it's fine <laughs> it's up to you like god's now saying like before it was like flawless god's now saying you are a royal crown like a unique crown in the hand of the lord it's like how can i how can i be worrying um and i guess i mean it sort of leads to my like my love like my big kind of thing takeaway that i was kind of thinking on today and i was like wow you know my desire what my desire is right now on my heart in this time is to see women to see me <laughs> yeah to keep moving like this but to see women walking and rising up like rising 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 in all god has called them to do and be and to believe their worth to know their identity to wear the crown that god's given them mm. and to walk fearlessly because mm. if we now have a generation of women that are doing that earlier sooner realizing that even whilst they're young whilst they're 16 17 that they know their worth and their identity then you know it changes it changes the game for everybody because absolutely like, i'll even go younger than 16 17 you know yeah you're right you're right you're so yeah. right you know, it's like what because if not if they're not knowing their identity then if they're not knowing how loved beautiful flawless they are from young it, it, it's, it's harder it's harder to get back to that and if they are knowing it from early it's like these lot are changing the world and it affects our obedience you know not even obedience like that's one thing, but the way we view and value ourselves it affects generation it affects our bloodline it affects what we choose to do it affects our purpose it affects how we show up at work it affects who we marry the children that we raise and it affects generations and if we could just turn that thinking on that if I walk in my full identity knowing I'm loved flawless made righteous whole you know I'm a daughter son of God and and I'm just showing up to the world it's affecting not only my life but the decisions mm. you know, everyone else makes so and then in that you know when you know that there's a certain obedience as well that comes to it you're able to maybe fearlessly more courageously obeying what God calls you to do because you're like okay I, I'm going to obey you, God, because I know your love for me. I know you're going to do this with me. I know I don't need to fear. Um, absolutely. And it's awesome, so. yeah, 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 absolutely. That's beautiful. And um, I think, yeah, like you said, you've, I can't add to that. You've just given it justice. Women that are able to rise up from a young age. And saying that just made me remember, not remember, but just think of like something I have to say. Um, you, obviously, we've talked about you supporting charities and things like that. And we've talked about how charity is not just starting from home. Um, yeah. You know, charity is also on the outside, but I do want to come back to home. So yeah. something that Takia does, I hope you don't mind me saying, um, she does this thing called cell group with the children in our family. So every um, Saturday, like this, for me, this is amazing charity work in itself. Um, and you may not do it as charity, but charity does begin at home. I do believe that as well. Um, cell group is where the children come together on Zoom in this pandemic, mm -hmm. something the children need. But they come on there, talk about Christ, of course, talk about their highs and lows, talk about support each other. It's just a network. And I think this in itself is actually helping the children to find their identity in Christ. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I want to commend you for that because that's such a beautiful thing to start with the children. And I think it does start from here. 
Oh, you're making me emotional. <laughs> you're making me all emotional. But um, I yeah, I love that. I do. I love. I love spending time with little ones, and they're so young, and they've got you know, and every little child they have so much potential. <clears throat> yeah, and when we talk about young, they are from from the age of six up to thirteen. So you know, a few of them um between those ages. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. That's so sweet. Um, it's yeah, it's it's amazing. It's amazing to spend time with the kids like that. And you know, we, I, you know, miss me and Joy. Like me and my sister, we do that together with the kids, and we're yeah. able to do that because you again, you and Mum, you set the foundation for us growing up. Um, and now like we're a bigger family unit, and you know, um, and and we're stronger like as a, a family unit. Um, but predominantly, I guess, with like before towards the age of you know growing up just you and mom like there wasn't like a father in the household now it's different now we've got like you know this but yeah for me but what I would say is like we have to keep we have to keep pouring demonstrating the life you want others to to, to follow after you demonstrating like love for, for us pouring into us pouring out in the work you do with work through your podcast like you're pouring into people you demonstrate you. their life <laughs> yeah and then people people are inspired by the light that you create right but they want to emulate it in whatever other ways around so yeah I, 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 I'm doing that but know that you're definitely an inspiration in that journey right? oh. of doing with the little ones um yeah and, and I, I, I want them to grow in their word and their identity and know who they are and be fearless in school the little leaders so for them yeah. to feel the way that you feel today yeah 100 yeah 100 Wonderful. Okay, so sorry again. I stopped you in your tracks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know what I was saying. Um, yeah, I can't remember. Maybe. Um, yeah, you, you, okay. you talked. You had talked about your hair and um, your journey, and um, after that, we we went on to talk about you know walking in yeah. Christ. Yeah. Okay. So I guess um, you know, like one of my. Whew, oh, okay. Two things. When I look back again about where I've come from, where our family has come from, what we've now gone on to achieve, what we're doing, what we're creating, it can only be by God's grace, right? And <clears throat> you know, even now, like when I said the quote of Priscilla um, about, you know, trusting God's heart for you, even when you can't trace like the footsteps and everything, like back then, when I was growing up and knowing that maybe I had a, a voice or I was maybe I was good with writing or um, I like to speak about certain issues or maybe I'd be annoyed about certain issues like trust if I couldn't say anything to like the younger generation younger children and even adults like trust the things that God is doing, like is calling you to kind of uh, to do to function in um, trust that even some of the situations that are unfair the, the discriminations you felt, the whatever, trust that God is still going to be able to use that for his glory, use that as part of your journey. It's like Queen Esther in the Bible, um, she was a a woman um, that was an orphan and she suddenly found herself being a queen and being elevated in this way, but she had to speak out, um, she had to um, her situation didn't define what God was doing. It didn't define, you know, the, the struggle she kind of faced. It didn't need to because when she was operating with God, she'll be like, giving all my faith to you, all my trust to you. And there's a certain verse that she says, it says, um, it's, it's just a standout line. It's like, if I perish, I perish. And it's like that certain level of faith where she was like, I'm just going to do whatever God says and know that God has it in his hands. He has it in his plans. Um, and over and over in the Bible, the situations where it's like, you, they live in such a way, it's like, you know what, God take over. God's calling me to it, God will take over. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, if anything that I'm trying to be on right now on this journey of faith, it's like, God take over. God, you're calling me to do something, take over. Um, God, like, you're, you're calling me about, like, I'm getting so passionate right now, like, I'm learning more about climate change and things like that. I did not know that that would be my focus a few years ago or when I was understanding about community youth violence or um, and, and getting really really like uh, passionate about youth violence I was just saying yes to God slowly but I didn't know 
that these issues are related, that there's something about communities that I'm passionate about. Um, and it's, it's like that with all of us, like where there's always something that God's put inside of us. Um, but for me, um, what I'm knowing now, because I'm reading my word and because I'm knowing my word, it's like giving all of this to God, laying it to him. Uh, and hopefully day by day, like he's filling me with his spirit. He's filling me like with the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be able to even approach it in a way that is giving light, to approach these issues in a way that's giving light um, to the space. So, yeah, I think that's my last sort of like thing yeah. that's been on my heart to share like really yeah. deeply today. Um, um, I yeah. just want to say something on, on faith um, just quickly. Um, whilst we, we talk about... Uh, you. It, as humans as women or you know just as people growing um mm -hmm. in you know your identity in the way that you see yourself your self-worth and everything else we've talked a lot about um, christ as well and faith mm -hmm. religion mm -hmm. um and i just feel like it's important as well for people to acknowledge and remember that even yeah. um in christ you need to grow the word yeah. doesn't just come um it, it's a journey and it takes time and even that you know don't be hard on yourself if you haven't quite got there yet no. it's also a journey yeah. yeah you're right you know it's like it, it's, it's always just it's a case of just saying yes to small things sometimes um you feel like oh, i can't hang on i can't go there because i don't know my word enough or i can't even can i even claim i'm a christian i'm not yesterday night yes you know like, like I, I was in the club <laughs> yeah or i just had an argument with my sister god doesn't love me anymore and that is that's it's the biggest lie and you're right like it, it's a it's a journey it's a small thing just saying yes to god like just saying yes yeah i fell yes i don't know all of this there was one point where there was a bible study group when i was in woolwich and um god was saying to kia you need to go to this bible study group and this pastor I'm going to say his name he's amazing pastor Kola, and he was like okay guys you need to take it in turn to to, to share something you've learned during the week about your bible and i was like no no <laughs> i don't want to share. i was even intimidated by those people like they're my age and they were doing like they were speaking about the word so passionately and i was like i don't want to be here god like stop trying to force me to go they're not my people they, they, they weren't like i don't i'm not on their level at all but god it was a simple instruction god just said i need you to be there every sunday just show just, up yeah, just show up i'll yeah. do the rest and, and that sounds like guess, the feeling sorry gone. sorry that, that sounds like the feeling of inadequacy because you don't quite feel you're there yeah. exactly exactly and that's that's what the enemy tries to do like even sometimes on my Saturday nights were well, looking a bit left, a little bit, I'd still come on the Sunday because I thought God was saying you need to be there. Um, and yeah, slowly we're, we're all on a journey. That's it. And we all need each other to encourage each other to say, keep going, say, fan into flame, say, run your race, wherever you are in your race, just get up, keep running. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, Takia, that has been so insightful. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, and I've taken so much. This this talk has enriched me because you know it's a reminder that it's important to pour into each other um, yeah. and pour the right things into each other. Being able uh -huh. to to know where you are, and if you don't know that, still seek it. You, you, there's no age for it. You know, you may have been yeah. 16 and you didn't know, and you know now at 27, um, yeah. someone else who's 16 could know. You know, and I just feel like it's about yeah. exactly. showing up and turning up for that journey. Just just doing it in order to progress. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so thank you so much. Okay, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy with what you're doing. I'm so thank happy that you. people can like just share their story about um about yeah, about growing emotionally, growing like in their well being. Um yeah. you know it's that emo whole... emotional and mental justice that I, that we all seek yeah. that I want everybody to find. And you've helped me share that today. Um, I want everyone to know where, where they can find you. Um, follow this woman. She is a woman that you can gain from. Um, let us know what's your social medias uh, or whatever it is. Yeah, so Tick's Twenties. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Tick's Twenties, on YouTube at Tick's Twenties. Um, on LinkedIn, you can find me, Tikiya Mutupa. Um, can share a lot more of my health work. Um, and yeah, watch this space through the climate change um, initiatives, climate change discussions on communities. Um, 
So yeah, that, that's me. Thank you for having Wonderful. me. Wonderful. So I will write down all your um, social media things at the bottom of this video. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Bye. 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 Love you. Love you too. Stop recording. We all have emotions and think about things.